Hello all. In this video, we will see about gingival enlargement. Gingival enlargement is an important question in periodontics which you need to know for either a short answer or an essay. So by definition, gingival enlargement will go as increase in the size of the gingiva. It is also known as overgrowth. Histologically, certain terms were used hypertrophy, hyperplasia, fibrosis. These terms are not used clinically nowadays. The index for classifying gingival enlargement is scored as follows. Grade 0 as you could see in this picture, grade 0 shows no signs of gingival enlargement whereas grade 1 shows enlargement confined to interdental papilla. Grade 2 denotes enlargement involving papilla and marginal gingiva. And when grade 3 goes like this, you should not tell like enlargement involving papilla, marginal gingiva and attached gingiva. It is not like that. Gra grade 3 denotes enlargement covering 3 fourth or more of the crown. So the third part alone varies here. So this is the index for gingival enlargement. Classification goes as follows. The gingival enlargement could be either made due to inflammatory, drug induced gingival enlargement, neoplastic enlargements, false enlargements are associated with systemic conditions. This classification is based on the etiology as you could see here. The inflammatory enlargement can be acute or chronic. It is usually secondary to other enlargements like other systemic enlargements or condition and conditioned enlargements. If there is double etiology that is along with inflammatory, if there is an another cause for the enlargement, combined enlargement is seen means then you should treat it accordingly. So the chronic uh, inflammatory uh, gingival enlargement will go as follows. It, uh, it initially starts as slight ballooning of the interdental papilla and the marginal gingiva. And as you could see here, life preserver shaped is seen from the interdental uh, to the marginal gingiva. Uh, life preserver jacket which you use in boots, right? This life preserver shaped gingival enlargement is seen here in chronic inflammatory enlargement. It slowly increase in size to cover the crown. It can be localized or generalized involving multiple teeth. Sometimes discrete pedunculated mass of gingiva is seen. It is painless. Exception is when there is secondary infection or trauma, it could be painful. Etiology is mostly, uh, mostly plaque accumulation and retention in these sites. So this is a um, Generalized enlargement, as you could see here, plaque involved. Plaque, if plaque is involved in one quadrant or one side alone, then that side shows gingival enlargement. The patient is usually maintaining this side. In this case, the patient is maintaining this side without any debris or plaque, brushing and maintaining well. Whereas the other side is not well maintained and it shows gingival enlargement. So this is a classical example of inflammatory enlargement, and that is chronic in nature. So moving on to the next type, gingival change in mouth breathers is breathers is also a type of chronic inflammatory enlargement. Uh, it is seen in uh, maxillary anteriors usually. Gingiva is red and edematous. It shows diffuse shininess because of the dryness. Uh, the etiology is mostly dehydration. Acute gingival enlargement is usually gingival abscess. It is localized, painful, sudden onset and rapidly expanding lesion. Uh, it can be fluctuant and also has a surface orifice with purulent exudate that is pus discharge will be present. If permitted to progress, it will rupture on its own. It is different from periapical and periodontal abscess and you should know the difference. We will discuss about the differences in another video. And the etiology is usually some foreign substance or bacteria or toothbrush pick. Usually the foreign substance can be a fish bone or a food particle which has been lodged into the gingiva causing this inflammation. So the next type of gingival enlargement is drug induced gingival enlargement. In drug induced gingival enlargement we have many three main drugs which cause gingival enlargement. Before seeing the individual drugs we will see the general features of how drug induced gingival enlargement will be. Painless bead like enlargement of the interdental papilla which extends to the marginal gingiva which may develop into a massive form which will interfere with occlusion. It is a classical feature of drug-induced gingival enlargement, and uh, you could also see when uh, when when it is uncompli uh, complicated by inflammation, the lesion is mulberry-shaped. It is firm, pale pink, and resilient. Uh, the inflammation causes the erythematous nature. If it is not complicated by inflammation, then it is usually pale pink and resilient, and it will not bleed. 
but plaque if it presents it will lead to the secondary inflammatory process that is what we saw as combined enlargement along with inflammatory causes there is also the drug induced causes it complicates the enlargement then some suspect the role of plaque also uh, the role of genetic predisposition is also uh, suspected which is uh, which a uh, post graduate will definitely know for undergraduate level you need not go into the details of the genetic predisposition this is the classic mulberry and this mulberry shaped is the name given for a uh, drug induced gingival enlargement in general if anti convulsants that is phenytoin and other types of uh, other types of anti convulsant drugs anti epileptic drugs are classical drugs which are known to cause uh, drug induced gingival enlargement the cause is that phenytoin stimulates fibroblast like cells and epithelium fibroblasts under phenytoin exposure show increased synthesis of sulfated glycosaminoglycans this is one of the main reasons for uh, in the gingival enlargement here and the decrease in collagen degradation is also seen collagen forms but it refuses to degrade calcium channel blockers like amlodipine nifedipine are also classical examples of drug induced gingival enlargement it blocks calcium ion influx induced dilation of the arteries and arterioles is the mechanism of action of ccb so uh, these are the common drugs which causes uh, uh, drug induced gingival enlargement nifedipine diltiazem verapamil the substitute drug for these cases is isradipine drug induced gingival enlargement is first treated by substituting the drug which causes the enlargement immunosuppressants are the third drugs that is cyclosporin it inhibits t helper cells reversibly so they are also causes for the drug induced gingival enlargement the third type of gingival enlargement enlargements associated with systemic conditions conditioned enlargements are like pregnancy puberty conditions pregnancy gingivitis will be like it, it can be a single or multiple tumor like masses pregnancy induced gingival enlargement i am talking about and it will increase uh, the causes usually increase in both estrogen and progesterone by the end of the third trimester will increase the vascular permeability which will lead to the gingival edema and increased inflammatory response of the dental plaque so the factor here is to remove plaque uh, before the third trimester probably if the patient is susceptible to gingivitis and increase in prebotella media intermedia is one of the main causes of pregnancy induced gingival, uh, uh, gingival enlargement and the marginal enlargement is seen like bright magenta uh, red bright red or magenta color soft friable and smooth shiny surface as you could see here bleeding on slight provocation is a common uh, feature here tumor like enlargement mushroom like enlargement are also seen flattened sporical mass and uh, secondary ulceration uh, patient may irritate it or patient may just uh, touch it and uh, it can go into secondary ulceration it may cause pain in such conditions puberty is also a cause for a secondary gingival enlargement uh, male and female adolescents are prone here degree of enlargement uh, for scanty plaque interdental and marginal gingiva is uh, bulbous here capnocytophagus species causes the initiation of puberty induced gingival enlargement and increase in prebotella intermedia and uh, prebotella nigrescence is also seen here now the next type of conditioned enlargement vitamin c deficiency scurvy does not cause gingival inflammation from our young age we have been taught that vitamin c deficiency is a cause for gingival bleeding and scurvy is the name given to the disease but it does not cause gingival inflammation it causes hemorrhage that is bleeding collagen degradation edema of the gingival connective tissue but not inflammation the marginal bluish red soft and friable smooth shiny surface is classic of scurvy the next condition is plasma cell gingivitis is usually allergic in origin some toothpaste ingredient may not or chewing gum ingredient which the patient may find allergic can cause plasma cell gingivitis it it can be a mild marginal gingival uh, gingival enlargement and it can extend to the attached gingiva also it is a red friable and granular the nature of the gingiva in this gingivitis and it bleeds easily no clinical attachment loss is seen it is allergic in origin as i said already solitary plasma cell tumor is also seen it is known as plasma cytoma it is sometimes associated with multiple myeloma the next condition is pyogenic granuloma it is non specific conditioned enlargement tumor like enlargement is seen here 
but uh, it is an usually it is an exaggerated response to minor trauma some toothpick trauma or fishbone trauma and patient may respond like pyogenic granuloma the name is actually misleading now we will see about systemic diseases causing gingival enlargement leukemia is one of the important condition causing gingival enlargement bluish red shiny appearance of the gingiva along with firm firm or friable nature of gingiva and hemorrhage is seen it is painful usually and necrotizing ulcerative inflammatory enlargement uh, involvement is seen okay now this is seen here and often in acute leukemia acute mild that uh, m4 and m5 type of aml is common here in leukemia now we have this this picture is of vaginous granulomatosis granulomatous disease uh, one of the main um, uh, classic finding of this is uh, you tell me what fruit it resembles this type of gingival enlargement also known by that name strawberry gingivitis uh, it is an acute granulomatous necrotizing lesion of the respiratory tract including oral and nasal defects the renal lesions and acute necrotizing vasculitis is also seen in vaginous granulomatosis it is a chronic granulomatous disease oral mucosal ulceration is seen gingival enlargement is seen strawberry gingivitis is the classic feature abnormal tooth mobility is also seen it is reddish and purple as you could see here and bleeds easily the cause is immunologically mediated tissue injury neoplastic enlargements as we saw it is different from leukemia okay it is a um, uh, the leukemia comes under conditioned um, one second leukemia comes under systemic diseases causing gingival enlargement but now we are seeing about something different neoplastic enlargements neoplastic enlargements of gingiva can be benign or uh, neoplastic benign or malignant benign tumors include some of the common names you which, which you have uh, listened often epilepsy fibroma peripheral ossifying fibroma papilloma and peripheral giant cell granuloma central giant cell granuloma now let me give some introduction epilepsy is nothing but a common name and old term for any gingival swelling fibroma is a fibrous uh, it is a histological finding actually and uh, as you could see here all these are histological findings papilloma has a viral origin and peripheral and central giant cell granuloma is uh, it's differentiated by whether bone is involved or not if bone is involved as seen in this radiograph then it is central giant cell granuloma if gingiva alone is involved it is peripheral giant cell granuloma what are the malignant tumors common in gingiva squamous cell carcinoma malignant melanoma and metastases of other tumors are also seen here false enlargements what does this name indicate that is gingiva is not involved but the underlying structure enlarges which causes the gingiva to look big okay one of the classic example is exostosis or tori another is another classic example is developmental enlargement in both these cases the gingiva is not enlarged the underlying structure the bone or the tooth eruption causes the gingiva to to look enlarged okay so these are false enlargements pathic gingival enlargements idiopathic gingival enlargement is also known as gingivomatosis elephantiasis idiopathic fibromatosis hereditary gingival hyperplasia congenital familial fibromatosis it affects the gingiva attached gingiva along with the marginal and interdental gingiva as you could see here no area is spared it is pink firm leathery with minute pebbled surfaces it is characteristic and bulbous enlargement may be uh, lead to secondary inflammation and associated with tuberous sclerosis it is one of the common uh, features it is one of the important uh, point to remember epilepsy mental deficiency and cutaneous angiofibroma are the triad of tuberous sclerosis in that condition gingival idiopathic gingival enlargement is also seen so management generally we have to remove the etiology except for idiopathic gingival enlargement we know the etiology for almost all the others so we have to remove the etiology that is the first thing the if it is an in inflammatory uh, enlargement which is a, which is the most common gingival enlargement we have to go with phase 1 therapy scaling and root planing multiple sittings of scaling and root planing will definitely reduce the in inflammatory component of the gingival enlargement 
if it is drug induced you should go for drug substitution which drug is causing the enlargement you have to note it down and substitute it with another uh, drug performing similar function but which will not cause gingival enlargement and finally if there is persistent enlargement which means the inflammatory component is completely removed only the fibrotic component is remaining okay it is it will be tough and it will be without bleeding in such condition you can go for gingivoplasty that is shaping of the gingiva and gingivectomy removing the gingiva okay these are surgical procedures which will we will see in detail but persistent enlargement you remember you it will go for gingivoplasty or gingivectomy so i hope i have cleared the topic of gingival enlargement as uh, quick as possible to you see you soon in the next video